Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to go ahead and create our models and set up our migration. So let's get started. So uh, I have the code from the previous episode. I'm going to start off by first creating our models. So for our application, we're going to need a few models. So the first one is going to be our post model, which is obviously going to be our blog post or articles. Next up, we are going to have a category model. You can also name it a tag if you like, but I'm going to go with category. And next up, we need a migration. Uh, which is going to be category post. So this is going to be uh, what we use for our many-to-many -many relationship. And then later on, I'm not going to be adding those in this episode, but we will have one for our likes and then one for comments as well. Okay. And then potentially one for roles and permissions, which is going to be later on throughout the code. So let's start off by first creating these three migrations. So I'm going to open up the terminal and type in uh, PHP artisan make model post for our posts and then i'm going to do tag c tag m to create the migration and then tag c to also create a controller for it because we're going to be needing that and then i'm going to do tag f to create a factory for it so we can create some fake data and if you guys haven't used factories i'll show you guys how they work in this video so let's go ahead and hit enter and this will go ahead and create four files for us uh, after that i'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing except I'm going to remove the controller because I don't want controllers for our categories and then go ahead and do category, hit enter. And then for the last part, which is going to be our uh, category post, because we're going to have a many to many relationship between our posts and categories. So that means a single post can have many categories and then a category can belong to many or can have uh, multiple posts. So I'm just only going to create the migration. So I'm going to say PHP artisan, uh, make migration. And then inside here, we can say create category post table. And the reason I'm doing category post, uh, this is the convention in Laravel, we use the singular version of the model or the model name. And then we put the one that's alphabetically first, or we order them alphabetically. So it's going to be C before P. So it's going to be category post. So let's hit enter. And now we have all of our migrations. So let's go ahead and actually start off by uh, defining these guys. So on the left, I'm going to go on under our migrations folder, table migrations. And there are obviously a few ones, uh, the users, all those stuff. So it's going to be the posts. So let's start off with that. And I'm going to actually close the terminal as well. So for our post guys, uh, first thing we need is we are going to have an author, which is going to be the author of the posts. So uh, we could maybe name this author. We can use a user. So in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and create a user for it. So I'm going to say 4n ID uh, user ID. Or alternatively, you can also do 4n ID 4 and just pass in the user model. And a lot of all will take care of the rest. Uh, next up, we are going to need a string for the image. So which is going to be the image or the thumbnail of the post. You can also name it thumbnail if you like. And this one is going to be nullable. In some cases, we may not have an image. So what we will do is uh, we will show just the placeholder image if this is null. Uh, after that, we are going to have our title. So this one is going to also be a string, uh, which is just like this. And then after that, we are also going to have a slug. So the slug is going to be what is used in the URL, right? So the title may have a lot of spaces on it, might have some weird characters. The slug is going to be kind of the shorthand version of that with no spaces. So it's going to be a slug. And then also for the slug, it has to be unique. Otherwise, we will have uh, some issues. So I'm going to go ahead and add this unique here. So it, it's going to be a unique uh, value. And then after that, guys, uh, the last part is going to be the body of the article, right? So in this case, I'm going to say string. Uh, you can name it content. I'm going to name mine body. I think that's going to be the body of the blog post. And uh, well, not a string. It should be a text. So the strings usually have, I think, 255 characters or in Laravel, it's a bit longer sometimes depending on your database. Uh, there's also medium text and a long text. So I think medium text can be useful sometimes. A long text is just very big. I think it's like a few megabytes, 16 megabytes, something like that. I personally have never had to use it. So I'm just going to go ahead and use text. If you find your application, maybe your blog posts are too big and uh, text is not enough, maybe you can then go ahead and switch it up to medium text. But I think for now, text should be more than enough for us. So now that we have, these are going to be actually all the core things we need for the blog post. So we're going to have some things about publishing it and unpublishing it. So I'm going to go ahead and add a timestamp. And this timestamp is going to be used to manage or control whether or not a blog post is published. It's also going to be used to kind of schedule a post to be published in the future. So I'm going to name it uh, published at, and I'm also going to make it nullable. 
So if it is null, that means the blog post isn't published, right? Very straightforward. Uh, last but not least, guys, we're going to have a Boolean. Uh, this one is going to be named Futured. So if a blog post is Futured, it's going to be shown on our landing page. It's going to be like the top three posts. Uh, you know, it's like a recommended post, right? So that's what it is it's going to be used for. And I'm going to give it a default of false. So by default, all the blog posts are not published. Last but not least, guys, uh, this is going to be the only thing we need. This one is optional. You don't have to do it, but I'm also going to go ahead and give it uh, soft deletes. Okay, and it should be table, uh, soft deletes. And I forgot the L. So I think it's just nice to have. Uh, if you don't like soft deletes, you can just uh, ignore the step. Okay, it's not mandatory. I think it's just a cool feature to have. So that's going to be our post table, guys. Let's go ahead and also set up our categories table. Now categories is going to be relatively simple. So I'm actually going to go ahead and copy title and image, sorry, uh, title and slug from our posts over to categories. And that's actually all we need in terms of information. Maybe you can add a description, but alternatively, I'm also going to add a color section because I want uh, each category to have its kind of own unique color. If it's like a PHP category, be blue. If it's Laravel, be red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add uh, two strings to it. One is going to be a text color. And then it's also going to be a nullable. So in case we don't have a color, it's going to be default colors. And then I'm also going to have a BG color. Okay. And these are going to be maybe uh, Tailwind CSS classes. You can also use primary or secondary co color. If you like, I'm going to be go with text and BG because it's quite obvious what they mean. And that's going to be our categories. Super simple table. And last but not least for our category post, uh, we are going to have two foreign IDs for our category and our post. So I'm going to say a foreign ID a four post class and then the exact same thing for category as well just like this and i believe you are done guys so let's go ahead and try to migrate this and hopefully everything works fine so let's do a php arts and migrate and now i believe we have successfully migrated everything so last step guys in order to uh, because it's going to be hard to create fake data for our articles. It's going to take quite a bit of time. We're going to use a feature in Laravel called factories. And factories are basically, uh, as the name suggests, it's like a factory. It creates data for our application, okay? So we have created two factories, which was the post factory and the category factory. And if you do the dash I, it will automatically go ahead and update your model. So you also need to have this use factory trait on your models. So if you manually created the factory, make sure you go on your model and add this use factory trait. But if you use the command dash I will automatically do it for you. So in this factory, we can define some uh, criteria and Laura will go ahead and create fake data for us. So we can create fake blog posts and fake categories, which makes it easier to test our application on local development. So let me show you guys how this works uh, in practice. Okay. So inside this post factory, what you can do, you can actually look at the user factory to get some kind of an idea of what it does. You're going to define all the columns and then tell it what type of data it should be. Okay, so let's go ahead with our post uh, factory. Uh, we are going to have one for user ID. So it's going to be the author of the post. And one thing we can do is we can actually get the user factory and just say user. First, we need to import the user model and then do a factory. And what this will do is we'll create a new user and then assign the ID to over here, right? So it's going to create a bunch of fake users for us as well. Next up, we're going to do our title. And then here we can say this dot faker. So this will access the faker object. And then here we can say uh, for the title, maybe something like a sentence. Okay. So this faker object has a bunch of methods on it. It will generate fake sentences for us. And if you guys hover over it on VS code or uh, PHP storm, you can actually define the number of words and I'm going to leave it as the default. Next up, we are going to have the slug. For the slug, I'm going to also use the exact same thing. We can say this uh, dot faker. Now there is a slug method over here. And by default, it's like six words. I'm going to make it like be three words. Okay. I don't want it to be too big. Uh, next up, we are going to have our image. Now faker actually can generate fake images for us. So I'm going to say this dot faker dot uh, image url so this is going to create a fake image url uh, one more thing we have actually let me open up our migration on the side so we can see it because i already forgot all the columns we have so let me open it up our migration and then i'm going to open up the posts 
So we have our post migration on the right, and then we have our faker on the left. The next thing we need, guys, is going to be at the body. So I'm going to go ahead and say body. Now for the body, we can use a paragraph. So this is going to be this dot faker dot paragraph. Now, as far as I know, there is no way to generate HTML paragraphs in Faker. As far as I know, I have never seen it before. So, and inside, you can pass in the number of uh, sentences. So, I'm going to say 10, 10 sentences per article. So, the remaining parts are going to be published ad and featured. So, for published ad, we can go ahead and say published at. And we can use Faker for this as well. So, we can say this dot Faker. And I believe there is something called time between. Yeah, date time between. So what this will do is this will generate a fake date, a date time object between a time frame you pass in. So if you like at VS Code, this actually has minus 30 years and now. So at any time between the last 30 years. In our case, I'm gonna do go ahead and say a minus one uh, week, and then uh, plus one week. Okay. So we can have some articles that are already published over the last week, and then some scheduled for the future. Last part mini, uh, missing guys is going to be featured. So this is going to be our uh, future post. I'm going to say uh, featured. And then for this one, we can use uh, this dot faker dot boolean. Okay, this will give us a random boolean, zero or one. And uh, it's, by default, it's going to be 50 50. So let's say if you generate two posts, one is going to be zero, one is going to be one. So we can actually change the odds. Now, future posts are supposed to be very small. For example, if you have 100 articles, maybe five of them are featured. So I'm going to set this to 10%. And I believe now we are done, guys. So last thing remaining is going to be our category uh, factory. I'm going to copy title and slug from our posts. And I'm going to add that to our category factory. Okay. We don't need to worry about the colors. I'm just going to use default colors for all the posts. And I believe we are done, guys. So let's go ahead and test this out. So one thing we can do in order to create uh, this fake data is if you go under your database folder, look under seeders. So the seeder is basically used to, as the name suggests, seed or create fake data. So it uses your factories to create data for your application. It doesn't have to use factories. You can also manually create them yourself. So in our case, it actually contains some uh, existing code, which is commented out. We can actually use the first one. And instead of a user, we can go ahead and change this to a post. So basically, uh, you get the model, you call the factory method on it, and you tell it how many items you want to create, and then you call this create method, right? So this will go ahead and create 10 fake posts for us. So let's test it out. We can go ahead, actually, let's make it 100, and then I'm also going to go ahead and create five uh, fake categories. So this is going to be the main database seeder. So in order to run this, uh, you need to go ahead, open up your terminal, and run php artisan db feed and this will go ahead and basically generate fake data for us now we don't have any way of seeing if it works if you guys have php my admin or table plus you can go ahead and check it out that way if you don't uh, there is another way you can use something called php artisan tinker so you can do php artisan tinker it's a command line tool to play around with your application so what we can do is we can actually go ahead and copy this uh, get our model and do count and now we get 100, right? I can do the exact same thing for category as well. And we get five. Let's do for users as well. We can do user uh, count. We should have 100 users because for every category, every post, we are creating a new user. And we actually have 201. We have more than that. Interesting. Okay, cool. I'm not sure actually why we have 200. So the last thing, guys, uh, if you want to exit Tinker, all you have to do is do Control C. And that's it. You're good to go. So let's exit this. And that's it. Gonna, that's going to be it for guys for today's episode, guys. If you have any questions, you can let me know in the comment section below. On the next episode, we are going to build our homepage and display all the blog posts on it. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. As always, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new so you get notified of the latest videos. And as always, I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.